Hey GED students, I had a question asked on Facebook about solving inequalities. Miranda was working on the beginning level practice of the solving inequalities lesson on the crash course and got a little tripped up because she felt like these two problems, number one and number three, were following different rules. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. Now, this is my second time trying to make this video. I'm a little sick. I've got COVID, you guys. We'll see if I can make this make sense this time. Okay, let's give it a try. So I actually want to start with number three. Now, directions on this thing said, solve each inequality and graph its solution. It's actually asking you to do do two separate things. So I'd like to start by solving each of them. We can compare that because that's the part that was tripping up Miranda. And then I'll go back and graph them at the end. So like I said, let's start with number three. And whenever I'm solving, I need to give myself some space. There wasn't enough space on this worksheet. I highly recommend you grab a piece of paper to give yourself space for this. Because every time you solve, whether it's inequalities or equations, I really, really, really beg you to show me your work every time. A lot of students will skip it thinking the work's not important, but it is. We've got to learn the language, the grammar of mathematics in order to truly understand what we're doing enough to pass the kind of problems that show up on the GED. So two things I'm going to look for when you guys are solving. I'm going to look for your balanced change line. We're allowed to make changes to equations and inequalities, as long as our change is balanced, meaning we do the same thing to the left-hand side that we do to the right-hand side. So I wanna see any balance change you make. So that's where I wanna start here. My goal when I solve is to get this letter, in this case, N alone, but N is not alone. You can see that there's something else hanging out on the left-hand side of this equation, a minus six. So if I wanna get that letter alone, I'm gonna to have to get rid of subtract six. So I'll do the opposite. We always use opposites to get rid of things. I'll add six. You say, can I do that? You can, you can do whatever you want, as long as you do it to both sides. So jump across the inequality symbol and let's try the same thing on the right-hand side. Now, Miranda, I really, really, really want to stress that the left-hand side and the right-hand side, it makes a difference. So as we look for what's coming down, we're going to look just right above us. As I examine what the new left-hand side will be, I'm going to ignore totally everything on the right. I'm only going to examine the left-hand side. Subtracting 6 and adding 6 are opposites. They will cancel, and N will be right there left on the left-hand side. Now, same thing on the right-hand side. This is the work I'm doing. I always look up to see where my answer is going to come from. So negative 14 plus 6, and you can totally do this in your calculator. You always have a calculator on the GED when solving inequalities. So negative 14 plus 6 gives me negative 8. Now, the part that tricks students, the inequality symbol. Now, the good news is most of the time, it just drops down exactly the way it looks right now because most of the time, the relationship between the left and the right-hand side is not going to be affected by the change that we make. Uh, so I'm going to drop down this less than or equal to sign. And that makes sense because what I'm saying here is that the left-hand side was less than that right-hand side. So if I give them both six more, I'm not going to change that relationship. If I give them both the same change, like I add six over here, I add six over there, whichever one is less than is going to remain the same. I haven't changed the relationship. Now, again, I'm going to save the graphing for a little bit later. I want to compare that to this number one, which operates a little differently. Let me show you what I mean. So on number one, I have the inequality negative 12 is greater than x minus 7. And once again, to solve this, I need to get my letter alone. So my goal starts the same, but interestingly enough, my letter this time, instead of being on the left-hand side of the inequality symbol, is on the right-hand side of the inequality symbol. And it doesn't really change what I'm doing. It just kind of changes the direction I'm moving. Because my let goal is for the letter to be by itself, I'm going to have to start here 
getting rid of this subtract seven by doing the opposite again, adding seven. And you say, can I do that? And I'm like, you can do whatever you want as long as you do it to both sides. Make sure you make it all the way across that inequality symbol. Do the same thing there. Now, Miranda might be saying, Kate, that's exactly what I did. When is this video going to get interesting? Well, here's where you missed something, Miranda. Here's where the disconnect came up. And that is you all of a sudden flipped X over here to the left. Why? Um, remember, only examine the left-hand side. Only examine the right-hand side. Okay, so left-hand side uh, had these numbers. I shouldn't see X suddenly flip over to the left. Okay, so let's do that. Negative 12 plus 7. Again, you can do it in your calculator, but negative 12 plus 7 is negative 5. Whew, guys, I am running out of breath. I think I need to speak slower. Okay, then on the right-hand side, examining that by itself, subtracting 7 and adding 7 are opposites. So now I have x on the right-hand side. Now you're right, Miranda. Nothing's been done yet to flip my inequality symbol, okay? If I add 7 to two things, the bigger thing will still be bigger. And so I see the same inequality symbol. But now, this answer right here, this is absolutely, totally, and completely correct. There is nothing wrong with this answer. Negative 5 is greater than x is true. However, this is not normally how we write inequalities. We normally like to put the letter on the left-hand side only because it makes it easier to understand. Not because this way is wrong, because the other way it's easier to understand. So I'm going to take one more step here where I flip it. I flip the left-hand side, I mean the right-hand side to the left, and I flip the left-hand side to the right. Now here, here is where my inequality sign flips. Because I flipped the left-hand side and the right-hand side, I actually flipped the relationship. I took the thing that was bigger and I put it over where the smaller thing used to be. And I took the thing that was smaller and I put it over where the bigger thing used to be. And so this is when I see my inequality symbol flip. It's not because I multiplied or divided by a negative. I didn't. It's because I changed the order of what I was saying. Let me explain it using plain English. I want you to imagine that my original thing said Miranda instead of negative five. Miranda is taller than, and let's use Kate instead of X. Okay, Miranda is taller than Kate. Now, if I wanted to say this same thing, but start with myself, because I guess I'm kind of self-focused, like I wanted to start with Kate instead of Miranda, it, I couldn't just flip it around and have that relationship be the same. If Miranda is taller than Kate, Kate is not taller than Miranda. Kate is actually shorter than Miranda. By flipping the people I'm comparing, I flip the relationship word I'll use. So same thing here. By flipping the things I'm comparing, I end up flipping my inequality symbol. And now, the reason why I like it written this way is because it makes it easier to graph. It's way easier to think about graphing, you know, x on this number line if x comes first. Okay, so now that we did all this, let's go ahead and graph our solutions on a number line. So here's my solution. x is less than negative 5. So I will start with negative 5. I'm going to use this open dot because I have a strictly less than. I don't have that little equal sign underneath. Uh, and so negative 5 isn't uh, part of the solution. It's just where the solutions start. And then I graph off in the less than direction. Color that all in. Color in the arrowhead. Okay, now let's come over here and look at how I'd graph this solution, which is similar, except for this time, n is less than or equal to negative 8, less than or equal to negative 8, so this time I'm going to use a closed dot, but it's still a less than symbol, so I'm still going to go off in the less than direction and color in that arrowhead. All right, so if you flip, this is the main thing we need to walk away with from this video, if you flip the left and right hand side, So if you flip the left-hand side and the right-hand side, 
flip the inequality symbol. Wow, I don't think I'll be making many more videos today, guys. Whew, it's hard to breathe. Okay, and then another thing to walk away with is it's not wrong if the letter's on the right-hand side, but having your variable on the left-hand side makes something easier to graph and easier to understand. So it makes the solutions to inequalities easier to understand and easier to graph.